Consider this approach to what we do compared with that of selling, which may be defined as persuading someone of the merits of. While the simple presence of the word persuade does not portend that ill will is afoot, it still sounds like a coercive act. And that is coming from a salesperson proud of our profession. In fact, let's go further to state that there's not a more noble, necessary form of making a living. It is difficult to imagine money changing hands for any reason whatsoever without some sort of sales process first occurring. Sales, after all, is what makes the world go round. That stated, however, we can seek to achieve our goals by A, offering solutions to our guest needs and therefore making it their idea, or by B, imposing our will upon them. Call it forming an alliance versus subjugation. It is obvious that forming an alliance is a far better approach to relationship building. How do we put the emphasis in the right place and stay true to our guests' needs? A good place to start would be to accept the fact that we may not be the smartest person in the room. We don't have to be. A little humility will go a very long way. No one cares how much we know until they know how much we care. If we get to know our guests, we will understand their needs. We might ask ourselves, how do my products address what is going on in their lives? And let's remember the ratio of ears to mouth. What ideas might we share with them that they may not have contemplated? Consider this example for a little context. My assistant parts manager, Rick, with whom I had worked for nearly 20 years, approached me after I bought my long bed crew cab four wheel drive pickup. He asked if I wanted the tubular side steps like I had on my previous truck. Feeling very confident and sure of myself, I responded, no, I've got that place out in Colorado, don't forget. The wheelbase on this truck is so long and I don't wanna lower my ground clearance with an already shallow breakover angle. Of course, as you can imagine, this would lead to worsened high centering potential. I was sure Rick would be impressed with my argument, but he didn't miss a beat. Rick responded that he had considered the exact same issue, in fact, regarding the truck that he had purchased just the week before. He continued by reminding me that he also has rural property and had played the same concern over in his own mind. Then he became the educator. He explained, I quickly realized though that sliding out over the side bolster of that front seat was going to wear out the foam in the seat and in no time, the seat would begin to break down and wear out. I know you, Eric. As OCD as you are, that is gonna drive you nuts. He was right. Give me the side steps, I responded, surprised by the accuracy of his point and the fact that I had failed to consider this. Afterward, I was reminded of our conversation every time I climbed into and out of that truck. The seat was not wearing excessively, and I was very grateful Rick had showed me the error of my ways. Granted, we probably don't have the luxury of knowing our guests as well, but a few thoughtfully considered questions will yield similar benefits. Listen for the answers. Let's consider what it is that we might share with our smart, well-informed guests, which provides a learning opportunity and saves them from a bad decision. Think about it. Good luck and good selling.